live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in New York City for CUBE NYC. This is our ninth year covering the big data ecosystem. Now it's AI, machine learning. Uh, used to be Hadoop, now it's growing. Ninth year covering the CUBE here in New York City. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Josh Rogers, CEO of SyncSort. Um, going back, long history in the CUBE. You guys have been on every year. Really appreciate chatting with you. It's been fun to watch the evolution of SyncSort and also get the insight. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thanks for having me, it's great to see you. So you guys have constantly been on this wave and it's been fun to watch. You guys had a lot of IP in your company and then just watching you guys kind of surf this, this big data wave, but also make some good decisions, make some mm -hmm. good calls. Um, you're always out front. Yep. You guys are on the right, on the right uh, parts of the wave. I mean, now it's cloud, you guys are doing some things. Mm -hmm. Give us a quick update. So what's, you guys got a brand refresh, so you got the new uh, logo going on there. Right. Give us a quick update on SyncSort. You got some news, get the brand refresh. Give us sure. a quick update. Um, so we'll I'll start with the brand refresh. We, we refresh the brand and you see that um, in the web properties and in the messaging that we, um, that we use in all of our uh, communications. Um, and we did that because the value proposition of the portfolio had expanded so much um, and we had gained so much more insight into some of the key use cases that were helping customers solve that we really felt we had to do a better job of telling our story and, and probably most importantly engage with the more senior level within uh, these organizations. What we've, what we've seen is that when you think about the largest enterprises in the world, you know, we offer kind of a, a series of solutions around two fundamental value propositions that tend to be top of mind for these executives. Um, the first is, how do I take the 20, 30, 40 years of investment in infrastructure and run that as efficiently as possible. You know, I can't make any compromises on the availability of that. Um, I certainly have to improve my governance and securability of that environment. But fundamentally, I, I need to make sure I can run those mission critical workloads, um, but I need to also save some money along the way because what I really want to do is be a data-driven enterprise. What I really want to do is take advantage of the data that gets produced in these transactional applications that run on my AS400 or IBM I environment, my mainframe environment, even in my traditional data warehouse, and make sure that I'm getting the most out of the, that data by analyzing it in a next generation set of I mean, one of the trends I want to get your thoughts on, Josh, because you're, kind of, you're kind of talking through what the big mega trend, which is, yeah infrastructure agnostic from an application standpoint. Right. <laughs> so the, that's the trend with DevOps, and you guys have certainly had diverse solutions across your, your right. portfolio. But at the end of the day, this is the abstraction layer customers want. They want to run workloads on environments that they know are in production, mm -hmm. that work well with applications. Mm -hmm. So they almost want to view the infrastructure, or cloud if you will, same right. thing, as just agnostic, but let the programmability take care of itself under the hood, if you will. Right, and what, what we see is that people are absolutely kind of extending and modernizing existing applications. This is in the large enterprise, and those applications and core components will still run on mainframe environments. And so what we see in terms of use cases is how do we help customers understand you know, how to monitor that, the performance of those applications. If I have a tier that's sitting on the cloud, but it's transacting with the mainframe behind the firewall, how do I get an end-to-end -end view of application performance? How do I take the data that ultimately gets logged in a DB2 database on the mainframe and make that available in a next generation repository like Hadoop um, so that I can do advanced analytics? And <laughs> when you think about solving both the optimization and the integration challenge there, you need a lot of expertise in both sides, the old and the new, and I think that's what we uniquely offer. You guys done a good job with integration. I want to ask a quick question on the integration piece because this is becoming more and more to, uh, table stakes, but also challenging at the same time. Integration and connecting systems together, uh, if they're stateless, there's no problem. You use APIs, right, mm -hmm. do that. But as you start to get data that needs state information, mm -hmm. you start to think about some of the challenges around you know, different disparate systems right. being distributed, mm -hmm. but networked. Right. In some cases, even decentralized. So right. distributed networking is being radically changed by the data decisions on the architecture, right. but also integration, call it API 2.0, or this new way to connect and integrate. Yeah, so what we've tried to focus on is kind of solving that, that piece between these older applications that run these legacy platforms and making them available to whatever the consumer is. Today, we see Kafka and in Amazon, we see Kinesis as kind of key you know, buses delivering data as a service. And so the role that we see ourselves playing and what we announced um, 
this week is an ability to track, you know, change data, deliver it in real time in these older systems, but deliver it to these new targets, you know, Kafka, Kinesis, and whatever comes next, uh, because really that's the fundamental partner we're trying to be to our customers is help, we'll help you solve the integration challenge between these, you know, this yeah. infrastructure you've been building for 30 years and this next generation technology that lets you take, you know, kind of get the next yeah. leg of value out of your data. So, so Jim, when you think about the evolution of this whole big data space, the early narrative in the trade press was, well, you know, no SQL is going to replace Oracle and DB2, and the data lake is going to replace the EDW, and mm -hmm. unstructured data is all that, that matters, and, and so forth. And, and now, you look at what's really happened is the EDW is a fundamental component of, you know, making decisions and insights, right. and, you know, SQL is the killer, you know, mm -hmm. app, uh, app for, for Hadoop. Uh, and I take an example of, say, fraud detection. Mm -hmm. And when you think, and this is where you guys sit in the middle from the standpoint of data quality, data integration. In order to do what we've done in the past 10 years, take fraud detection down from, well, I look at my statement a month or two later, and then call the credit card company, it's now gone to a text that's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. Still some false positives, and I'm sure you're you know, working on that even. But So maybe you could describe sort of that use case or any other your favorite use case and what your role is there in terms of taking those different data sources, integrating them, improving the data quality. Right, so I think when you think about a use case where I'm trying to improve the SLA or the uh, responsiveness of kind of how do I um, how to manage against or detect fraud rather than trying to detect it on a daily basis, I'm trying to detect it you know, at transaction time. You know, the reality is you want to leverage the existing infrastructure you have. So if you have a data warehouse that has detailed information about transaction history, maybe that's a good source. If you have you know, a transaction that's running or an application that's running on the mainframe that's doing those transactions real time, the ultimate answer is how do I knit together the existing infrastructure I have and embed the additional intelligence and capability I need from these new capabilities, like for example, using Kafka, to deliver a complete solution. What we do is we help customers kind of tie that together. So specifically, we announced this integration I mentioned earlier, where you know, we can take a change data element in a DB2 database and publish it into Kafka. That is a key requirement in kind of delivering this real-time you know, fraud detection if, in fact, I'm running transactions on a mainframe, which most of the banks are. Without ripping and, and replacing. And, and, and Why would you want to rip yeah, out an application you, you, you that you don't. You know, your core right. customer file? And, uh, we and, can just extend it. And you mentioned the Cloudera 6 certification. You guys have been early on there. Maybe talk a little bit about that relationship, the engineering work that has to get done for you to be able to get into the press release, you know, day, right. day one. When we, so we just mentioned that the fir my first time on theCUBE was in 2013, and, and that was on the back of our um, initial product release in the big data world. When we brought the initial DMXH release to market, we knew that we needed to have deep partnerships with um, Cloudera and the key platform providers. I went and saw Mike Olson. I introduced myself. He was gracious enough to give me an hour um, and explain you know, what we thought we could do to, to help them um, develop more value proposition around their platform. And it's been a terrific relationship. Our architecture and our engineering and product management relationship is such that it allows us to very rapidly um, certify and work on their new releases, you know, usually within yeah. a couple of days. And so not only can customers take advantage of that, which is pretty unique in the industry, but we, we get some, um, you know, uh, some visibility from Cloudera as, as evidenced by Tendu's quote in the press release that was released this week, it's just, which is terrific. Talk about your business a little bit. I mean, you guys are like a 50-year-old startup. You've, yeah. you've had this really interesting history. I mean, I remember you from when I first started in the industry uh, following you guys. Uh, and you've restructured the company, you've done some spin-outs, you've done some M&A, uh, but it seems to be working. Talk about you know, growth and yeah. progress that you're so making. So we're the leader in the big iron to big data market. We define that as allowing customers to optimize their traditional legacy investments for cost and performance. Um, and then we help them maximize the, the, the value of the data that get uh, generated in those environments by integrating it with next generation analytic environments. Um, to do that, we need a broad set of capability. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to optimize um, you know, existing leverage, um, infrastructure. You know, one is capacity management. So we made an acquisition about a year ago in the capacity management space. You know, we're allowing customers to figure out how do I make sure I've got not too much and not too little capacity. That's an example of optimization. You know, an, another 
uh, area of, um, of capability is you know, data quality, right? So if I'm gonna take, maximize the value that gets, of the data that gets produced in these older environments, it would be great that's when it lands in these next generation repositories, it's as high quality as possible. We acquired Trillium about a year ago. Um, and uh, are actually coming up on two years ago. Um, and we think that's a great capability for our customers. It's going terrific. We took their core data uh, quality engine and now it runs natively on a distributed you know, Hadoop infrastructure. Um, we have customers leveraging it to, to deliver you know, unprecedented kind of volume of matching, so not only breakthrough performance, but it's kind of this whole notion of write once, run anywhere. I can run it on an SMP environment, I can run it on Hadoop, I can run it on Hadoop in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we've you know, seen terrific growth in that business um, based on kind of our continued innovation, particularly pointing it at the, the big data space. Yeah, one of the things I, I'm impressed with you guys is you guys have transformed, so having a transformation message to your customers is, you have a lot of credibility. But what's interesting is, is that the world with containers and Kubernetes now in multi-cloud, you're seeing that you don't have to kill the legacy to bring in the new stuff. Mm -hmm. with, you can see, you can, if you connect systems, what you guys have done with right. legacy systems, okay, connect the data. You don't have to kill that to bring in the new. Right. You can do cloud native, you can do some really cool things. Right. I think there's, and there's this a, rip and replace concept is, is kind of going away. You put well, containers around it too, that helps. Right. It's expensive and it's risky, so yeah. why, why do that? <laughs> um, so I think that's, that's the realization. The, the reality is that when people build these mission critical systems, you know, they stay in place for not five <laughs> years, but 25 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the, the question is yeah. how do you allow the customers to leverage what they have and yeah. the investment they've made? but take advantage of the next wave. And, and that's what we're singularly focused on, and I think we're doing a great job of um, that, not just for customers, but also yeah. for these next generation partners, which has been a lot of fun for us. And we also heard people to have, um, doing analytics, they want to have their own multi-tenant, you know, uh, isolated environments, mm -hmm. which kind of goes to, don't screw this system up, if it's doing a great job on a mission critical right. thing, don't bundle it, right. just connect it to the mm -hmm. network and you're yep. good. And, and on the cloud side, you know, we're continuing to look at our portfolio and say, what capabilities you know, will, will customers want to consume yeah. in a cloud delivery model. And so we've been doing that in the data quality space for quite a while. We just launched and announced um, over the last, uh, about three months ago, um, capacity management as a service. Um, so you'll continue to see both yeah. on the optimization side and on the integration side, us continue to deliver you know, new method, new ways for customers to consume, uh, to consume the capabilities they need. That's a key thing for you guys, integration. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much, how you guys put the stake in the ground and engineer yep. your uh, activities around integration. Yep. Yeah, we start with the premise that you're going to need to continue to run this, this older investments that you made yep. and you're going to need to integrate the new stuff with that. What's next? What's, what's going on the rest of the year with you guys? So we'll continue to invest heavily in the real time and change data capture space. We think that's really interesting. It's, um, we're seeing a t tremendous amount of demand there. Um, we've made a s series of acquisitions in the security space. Um, we, we believe that the ability to kind of secure data in the you know, core systems and its journey to the next generation systems um, is, is absolutely uh, critical, so we'll continue to invest uh, there. And then I'd say governance. That's an area that we think is um, incredibly important. As people start to really take advantage of these data lakes they're building, they have to establish um, you know, real governance capabilities around those. So we, we believe we have uh, an important role to play yeah. there. And there's other adjacencies, but those are probably the big areas we're investing in Just right now. Continuing to move the ball down the field and sink sword cadence of acquisitions, <laughs> organic development. Congratulations. Yep. Right. Josh, Thank thanks for coming on. To Josh Rod, CEO of Sync Sword here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more big data coverage, AI coverage, cloud coverage here. Part of CUBE NYC, we're in New York City live. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us.